Why, hello, it is Adam. Welcome back to Bringing It Backwards, a podcast where both legendary and rising artists tell their own personal stories of how they achieve stardom. On this episode, we had a chance to hang out with Jen DeSilvio over Zoom. Jen was born and raised in New Jersey, and she talked to us about how she got into music, was put in piano lessons in middle school, and really fell in love with the piano and creating music from that age forward. She didn't start writing songs and showing them to people until she was a senior in high school. She talked to us about moving to Los Angeles, where a friend of hers was working with Macy Gray. When she made it to Los Angeles, she was able to co-write with this person who was working with Macy Gray, which led to more opportunities to co-write, and she said she would just say yes to everybody and everything. We talked about the success of her song, Rise Up, which was nominated for a Grammy in 2016, working with Caitlin Smith, Beth Dido of the band Gossip, and a ton of other super successful artists. She talked to us about songwriting during COVID and uh, working over Zoom, the most recent record she wrote with Christina Perry, and the song High, which she wrote originally with Caitlin Smith which Miley Cyrus ended up taking and putting on her new record, Attention. Make sure to check out the video interviews we have up as well, which are all on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, at Bringing It Backwards. It would be awesome if you subscribe to our channel and like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, at Bringing Back Pod. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, It would be amazing if you follow us there as well and hook us up with a five-star review. We'd appreciate your support if you follow and subscribe to our podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. We're bringing it backwards with Jen DeSilvio. Well, again, thank you so much, Jen, for doing this. I'm really excited to to talk with you about your, your career and your journey in music and what you have going on currently. Cool. Happy to be here. Amazing. Uh, I saw, are you born and raised in Jersey? I sure am. I'm from Mawa, New Jersey, and I am an East Coaster rider die. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> what was it like growing up in New Jersey? I know it's a big music. There's a lot of music going on there. At least there was in the late 90s, early 2000s with that emo punk scene. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't a part of any of it, so... <laughs> I lived a pretty normal, a pretty normal life there, if I'm honest. Like I, um, I went to school. I had piano lessons. I was on soccer teams. You know, suburb, suburb life. I guess you could suburb say suburb life. Okay. When did I, you start playing piano? Um, when I was in uh, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. I can't remember. Some sometime around there. Okay, so it started not like you weren't like a five year old going right into music and then doing that throughout your whole life. It sounds like you started, you know, late middle school. Yeah, exactly. Okay. When I got what drew, the book. Yeah, what, yeah, what drew you to piano? My parents put me in lessons. <laughs> I mean, like they put me in lessons. I always loved music, but like when I, once I, uh, me and my siblings, they just put us in piano lessons and me, I stayed and no one else did. And um, I just loved it. And, and I asked for a piano and keyboards and got very rinky dink things and have been collecting keyboards ever since. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did anyone yeah. else, did any of your siblings stick with it or no? No, nobody did. I don't know. Okay. Just, it was just me. I guess I was the only one who really liked. I mean, we all do different things. Um, sure. But I, I really, uh, I don't know. I really loved music. <laughs> <laughs> were you just a big fan of music prior to taking the lessons or, and it would just happen to be your parents were like, Oh, we should put you all in, mu- in piano. And you're like, okay, let's, let's do it. And then you really fell in love with it. Like how did that? I mean, begin? that's a, that's a great question. I think I'm going to ask my mom that. Cause I don't know the answer. <laughs> like, I don't know why music happened for. for oh, me. okay. Amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you I just remember that asked. your mom was told <laughs> that you were told to go on piano and then you loved it. I don't know. I think it's like one of those things when you're younger. I mean, I didn't, yeah, I didn't even know it existed. Like this was, you know, I didn't, I couldn't, obviously I couldn't play before I started to play. I wasn't like a prodigy or anything, but um, I just, I just remember when I got, uh, when I started taking lessons, I was like, well, I really like how this makes me feel. 
and I just spent like a hell of a lot more time than my siblings um, working on music. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I just, I don't know, I stayed with it, obviously. (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) And did you start writing songs pretty quickly or were you just mainly just trying to learn the instrument? Um, Learned the instrument, then started writing songs. They weren't good though, initially. When did you start Um, writing songs? Like when I was a senior in high school, junior, sometime around then. Okay. By myself. And then I started collaborating like later, later on after college and stuff. I don't know. I was like obsessed with it. I don't, I don't really know. No idea. Like, I don't know, like why it it was just something that really, I just felt good doing Mm -hmm. music. So I just. I guess Continue. I just kept doing it. <laughs> <laughs> when you yeah. were writing, when you were writing those first songs, did you ever show them to anyone? Yeah, they were awful. And I will never show them to anyone ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you were showing them to people. Did you play them out or was it just like you re- had them recorded? Like, t- tell me about that. Yeah, I would play it for people. And like my, my friends, they, they like, they like them, but I think like they don't have, uh, I think they just liked it because it was me and I was the only one who did music and they thought it was cool, but like, mm-hmm. it, they're not, they're not good. Songs. <laughs> well, so. I mean, if it's the first stuff you've written and uh, you know, you're probably not going to come out the gate writing huge hits. I mean, maybe people do, but <laughs> for the most part, I would think that that's kind of just the stepping stone to, to getting better. Um, yeah. so, so you played in, in senior years when you started writing songs, did you end up going to college for music or like, when did you, you know, like how did no, the, no. the progress I went, continue? No, I went to, I went to college for uh, business and then I um, was in like jazz improv group and taking like music classes. Um, but I didn't, I've never like gone to school for music. That was definitely just, just, um, I just, I just kind of kept doing it regardless of like what I was doing for like work or I was like big into soccer and I was always the girl on the soccer team who did music, you know? Like, mm-hmm. so, then, yeah. well then how did you end up getting into songwriting and, and composing and producing like how did that all and en- end up uh how that career path then begin oh yeah i just basically well i quit my job as one would do if they're unhappy and then um i moved to la I had a friend who was signed to macy gray and we started writing songs together and um that was kind of like the beginning and i just started doing sessions and continue but, to, to do that right, well, well to, to, that's kind of a big move though to move, just be like okay th- you you must have known that you were pretty good at what you were doing to make the decision to say you know what i don't like this job i'm going to move all the way to la and then have this person that you knew kind of co-sign for you to let you write with them i feel like i was pretty delusional like, i don't <laughs> okay. think I, was, I don't think i was good you, you just got I mean? you, you didn't think you were good or the in okay I kind of, no, I guess. Like, like go ahead. I don't sorry. Think, no, I mean, like, I didn't know what was good and what wasn't. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, so I think looking back, I don't think I had like a good, a good, um, like baseline for what would be a exactly. good or bad song. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But you were sending these songs to the, to your, to your friend that worked for Macy Gray then. Or no, we were how- writing together. We were writing together. Okay. So, but I mean, just, it, just to prior to that, to get out there and have this person say, okay, yeah, you can write with me. Or were they just a good enough friend to be like, oh yeah, sure. You can sit around and, and we can screw around and end up, is that kind of what happened? Exactly. Yeah. And then we just started like making songs and they got, they got to be really good. I mean, Macy's really good. My friend Honey mm-hmm. was really good. So like, I was probably like amongst great company and learning like crazy. And then I just started doing, you know, you just hit up different people and one thing led to another. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty like, I think a natural thing, like coming to LA and not knowing anybody. And then you just start like creating connections and like making friends and you just do sessions. <laughs> that was, I mean like that, I mean like it sounds so simple, but like I would just like work with, work, work with kind of like anyone. Um, Cause I was so hungry and like, so excited to be doing music and um and then obviously, like since then, I've been a bit more, I guess, uh, intentional with the stuff I work on. Sure. But it's still the same, like, 
passion and hunger and drive. Mm -hmm. What was the first like person or was there like kind of the first victory you had when it was like, oh my gosh, I got to work with so-and-so or this song really did well or somebody used this, a song I wrote? Like what was the f kind of the, the, was there a moment that kind of pushed you to keep going? Um, uh, I think like any time that I'm working with someone and the song is is good it's very inspiring and i think back in like the beginning of of working like in 2011 and 12 and just like writing it was just like getting a song done and like making it sound good was super super cool to me mm -hmm. um but i would say probably like the first like big hit that i had that did well was rise up and to see like people like non-music industry people respond to that that was pretty cool sure and yeah. did you know that was going to be a hit? Like kind of when you, when you wrote it, was it like, Oh, okay. I real feel, feel real good about the song. And then obviously it becomes like a Grammy <laughs> nominated oh, yeah. record. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um, to be honest, I had no idea. No idea. That's Not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just did that. That's a special song, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. It's a great song. And I like just looking at the uh, songs and artists that you've worked with, like, it's so impressive. I, I've, I've interviewed a, a handful of the people that you've worked with and like seeing names like Wens on kind of like when you first started out, like she's such a great singer and like kind of finding these people and working with, with some of these artists early on, was that kind of a cool experience to just kind of grab whoever was like, how did you meet some certain people early, early on in your career? Was it just, people asking like, Hey, do you know anyone that could do this? And you're like, sure, I'll do it. Was it just like, yes to everything kind of deal? Exactly. Literally. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you're, I was, I like I said, like a super hungry, super down to like, just, I was happy to be in the room. Like mm -hmm. so excited, you know? So, yeah. And then it just kind of continued to build up. I bet after that <laughs> song though, with rise up, that must've opened the doors quite a, quite a bit. Um, you would think, <laughs> I, I don't know if it did. I mean, like, I, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like music, it's like a forever journey. I think that song opens the doors for a specific kind of music, uh -huh. but you know, it's very different than like stuff I've done with like Beth Ditto or Anne Marie or sure. Fletcher or Bat Throw Ashes. They're all just like such different kinds of, um, artists that, it's particular to the genre, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I, I just have that in my head, but that's what I think. Is it hard to kind of navigate like that? Like, I mean, jump around in different genres like that? Well, no, I feel like if you lock in with an artist who has a strong sense of self or know what they want, um, it's you just have to... I think I consider myself to be um, an artist songwriter, which means mm -hmm. I, I dive into their world and help them expand upon ideas that they want, like... I'm very collaborative and somebody said once uh the artist is the star and we're the sky we are the supporting people very important but not necessarily the thing everyone looks at and that's totally the case you're that's just there to support definitely but super Sounds integral right 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 and so you show up to a session for for somebody that was trying to get into this or like they think they're a great songwriter or they are maybe are a great songwriter like what would you like was it hard to kind of like you know, you get thrown into these situations where it's like, okay, you've never been in a, in a writing session. Like now you're, you're kind of picking up how, what, you know, working with certain artists, does it just kind of build off of that? Do you get, like, do you become more confident in obviously in what you're doing and who you're working with? Um, what's the question exactly? Sorry. Like, like, <laughs> like how, how are you able to kind of like, if some, were you able to, how were you able to kind of build your confidence when it came to being in the rooms early on to now, you know, you've worked with so many people that it's probably more obviously uh, natural, but like, was it hard to, to gain confidence early on writing? Yeah. With people? Yeah. Great question. Uh, yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, for sure. That's the answer is like, we're all, we all have insecurities. I think regardless of like our industry. And I think, I think with music and, and writing, you know, there are days when like yesterday there was a day I, I had a session and it just, I arrived at three and I left at four fifteen. <laughs> it was oh, done. Wow. And my, I, I, I dropped um, our puppy off at my sister's house and she has a normal job. And um, she was working uh, since 9am and 
um, I, you know, she saw me work for an hour and she was like, seriously, like, seriously, that's what you did today. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. And you know, then, then there are days like the day before I was in a session from literally noon to midnight. So it just like depends every, every day is different. It depends on who you're working with. Sometimes you catch it. Sometimes you literally don't. Sometimes you're wondering why you're in the room. Sometimes you're, you can't believe how easy it, I mean, like it's literally, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, I guess, I mean, I, I've never really been one for dating, but, um, I guess back in the day, <laughs> I it's like a date. Sometimes you're like, this is awesome. And the other time you're like, how the hell do I get out of here? You know? Right. When, yeah. When you said you were only there for an hour and a half, I was wondering if it was going to go the other way. We were like, yeah, I walked in and this person was just, you know, didn't have a clue what they were doing. And I just had to get the hell out of there. But it sounds like you went in and it was, you know, gelled perfectly. You were able to get what needed to be done. And then you're out. Yeah. I don't know. They were open to receiving whatever the hell was coming out of my mouth. And in my brain, I had no idea where it came from. Literally couldn't have predicted it. And uh, I was like, well, this is happening. And they were like, yep. And then that was it. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm like, I, it's very, very rare. And then, you know, like a couple, a couple weeks ago, I wrote with um, my friend Fletcher and like, you know, we've been, we've been working for a really long time and we wrote a song and it was, so much fun and we had such a good time and we were like how did this happen because we feel like we didn't even work you know mm -hmm. we we're just hanging out um and the song's dope and that was definitely not an hour but um it was it was a it was like you know we're hanging with your friends making music i don't know it's cool sure. i mean it's kind of you're, you kind of came into this i mean i'm sure it still is like, I think what I think is interesting is like any guy that has a computer and like garage band can claim to be a producer. Like, oh, I have garage band and I've made a beat on my computer. So I'm now a producer when I feel like women aren't respected in that sense. I think you have to prove quite a bit more. I would imagine you have a similar take when it comes to that. And like, was that a hard thing to do to like cut through? Not only are you in this kind of, you know, man's world of that. Was that a hard thing to prove yourself early on as well? Yeah, I think I definitely was, uh, I definitely had a little bit of a, I have to, am I good enough? Can, can I sit at the table? But now uh, I, I feel bad for the guys who don't know what they're doing when they're working with me. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> I don't like, you know, I don't, that's probably sounds very cocky. I just mean like, I have... I have such a respect for people who really know their craft, who really know, you know, sound design and, and how to make things sound good. But at the end of the day, like that's important, but you have to have a song and you have to be able to come up with sick production. And um, all of that is just creative. And I think for me, um, a lot of the, like the finishing aspect of a song, like I find the people who are capable of, delivering like a final product that can stand the test of time. Like those are the, the, the folks that I like really respect because it's, it's that extra, like, I think like 15%, 10% of making, making it sound epic. Um, mm -hmm. And then of course it's taste. So what I might think is epic, you might literally shut off. So who knows? <laughs> <I don't> know. <laughs> But you've, you, you've kind of taken on like more of uh, like a mentoring role, right? I mean, you work with a bunch of nonprofits and especially that heavily influence or promote women in, in this industry, correct? Um, Not really. I mean, I definitely, well, <laughs> I, I mean, I definitely promote, I definitely promote women. Um, I think it's really important to, to mentor and also to be there for people who, you know, who need you know, help and guidance and advice and a pat on the back along the way. Cause sometimes it's just as simple as like you said, like giving somebody the confidence to tell, to tell them they're dope and they just got to continue doing it. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that I really do care a lot about. Um, I wish, I wish like, I mean, I don't know, I guess like back in the day, it would have been cool to have somebody to like ask questions to without being, uh, afraid, but now I just ask questions even when I'm afraid. So I just need to get an answer. Yeah. You know? Cause I, if once you're in those rooms, I mean, in the, 
this industry or in music or any art industry is, is kind of, I mean, it's hard to cut into and then it's cutthroat when you're there. It's like, if you ask the wrong question, are you going to be look, you know, Oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Like, and then are you thinking, Oh man, I'm ever going to get another job again. It's, you kind of have to, I don't know. I feel like it would be very hard to be vulnerable, especially early on. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. But you just got to like, keep your head down and, be positive and surround yourself with good people and talented people and kind people and do good shit. Sure. Do you, do you typically have like, when you go into a writing session, do you have a bunch of stuff like ready prepared? Like, okay, I know like what, what is a typical writing session look like? Is it like you already have something in mind that you're going to go present to this person or you just show up and they going to present to you and you can kind of just build off of what they, what the idea that they have is. Um, personally, it's literally whatever happens in the day. I never think about it. I know that sounds ridiculous. I mean, I'll make tracks. Sometimes I'll show somebody a track. A lot of the times though, I'm working with people who have, uh, an idea of what they want to say, or like, like working with somebody being like, I'm missing this kind of vibe on the record. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's make this kind of song then. Mm -hmm. Um, if someone's like, I want something to sound like, Neil Sedaka, I'll be like, okay, cool. Let's go down there. But um, a lot of the times it's a lot of talking and um, like, who are you? What, 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 what makes you tick? Like, where are you in your life? Mm-hmm. I think those, I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, there are definitely, there are definitely hits that have come out that I've done where I would say we didn't, really talk about what was going on in someone's head but i'd say like if i look back at you know at the songs that i think have done well they they're they're like real stories <laughs> like mm-hmm. just like artistically done about breakups or uh heartbreak or um i don't know like love you know i feel like it's all so <clears throat> i don't know i think it needs to be real for me, mm-hmm. that's how it's worked. So I'm sticking with that. No, for sure. I think people can sniff it out if it's not authentic. Yeah, definitely. When um, it comes- oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Keep going. I was going to ask you, like with with COVID happening and, you know, everything you were doing must have been in person. And then the music industry is kind of thrown upside down. And, you know, what what's going on in the world? Not only that, but then as a songwriter or a producer, you're used to working with people in person. How, I mean, was that hard to adjust obviously on the, the zoom end, or did you not mess with it too much on that side until it stuff opened up more? Like t- talk to me about that. Um, I feel like zoom was totally fine for me. I know a lot of people had a hard time with it, but it was definitely not a mountain to climb. I felt pretty, it was, it was fine. <laughs> Okay. I, had a, I had a good time on it. I felt like it actually opened more opportunities to work with people on in different time zones <laughs> around the world. So were you working with new people that you hadn't worked with prior mm-hmm. to using zoom? Yes. Yes. And no. So, okay. Some regular repeat offender friends and then <laughs> um, definitely some new people. I got a couple songs. One of them, I wrote a song over the pandemic called um, cry with cat and Cal Mel, these two girls from Australia that came out and, it's their single it's it's doing pretty well and then that was totally written and produced over zoom i wrote uh three songs on the lucius album over zoom i did and that came out i did um uh what did they do that was with brandy carlisle and cheryl Cheryl crow that they got on it and then um what was the other one uh oh Anne marie and i wrote a song with for sam fisher the city a remix we did that uh I don't know, like see like a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It sounds like you're constantly busy. Was it when, when I mean you it, it was two years inside, so that's like four things, but like, you know, I met yeah. people, I made made some like connections with some cool folks I wouldn't have normally said hi to. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, the pandemic is it's weird. It's hard. I still have friends who are getting sick and it's it's still really scary. So yeah, it obviously it hasn't gone away, right? Um no, definitely not. When it came to those those Zoom sessions with somebody that you maybe hadn't worked with before, do you feel like 
did you sh- do you show up more and it's like okay it's business because now it's okay we're in this room we're in this zoom call it, or I would imagine if you're in person, maybe there's a little bit more like BSing before or after, you know, or during the, the session. It, did you feel like it more like in a Zoom call? It was like, OK, we got to like be more like into business right away or not at all. I think everybody was different. OK, you know, yeah, every, every single one was different. Some I think in the beginning of the pandemic, I think everyone was just happy to say hello. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like I was like, you know, what, where are you? What are you doing? What did you do today? Oh yeah. How many glasses of wine or bottles did you guys like, you know, this is craziest time in history. This is crazy that mm-hmm. this, this has happened and we're all still, I mean, there, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really honestly like this. Yeah. I was about to go down a COVID rabbit hole of thought and I, I totally just shut the door, but I, <laughs> um, Yes. Yeah. Some, some zoom sessions were, you know, cool. And some, uh, I can't, I mean, I'm not remembering the bad ones. That's kind of odd. I normally remember the bad ones. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with the stuff that happened over zoom and the relationships I met and the, mm-hmm. the friendships I made. So, and I was like, I mean, honestly, it's kind of efficient. You don't leave your house, you do something for three hours and you feel productive so it's, it's a good time i don't know like it was hard then 2020 like what the hell are we doing like right jesus i don't know i wrote a song in the day it felt good I, I would write a lot with my friend caitlin who i think she was we actually wrote a song she's actually on my on her way to my house right now because so we're doing some stuff today she just flew in from uh she's probably here actually they just endorse them minneapolis um, but, uh, we wrote, a, we wrote a song right before, uh, the world shut down called high that Miley, um, um, end up, ended up, uh, taking and uh, making sick and all this stuff. And then Kate ended up repurposing it and releasing it herself. So there's two, like the old days, two songs out at the same time called high, which are really cool. But oh, Caitlin, awesome. and I, <clears throat> Caitlin and I, um, I love writing with her. She's amazing. And, um, I guess like she kind of saved me in the beginning of COVID. I just remember being like, there are sirens, there's protests, there are people dying. <laughs> like, why are we writing songs? What is the point of this? And she's like, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, I'm like, oh, she's like, but let's just do it. And then we do it and we'd feel a little bit better. And then we'd go back and cry and drink. And that's just what it was for like seven to eight months. So, wow. Yeah, I've I had a chance to interview her like in the beginning, very beginning of COVID. It was yeah, yeah interesting how like, you know what what has happened over the course of a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but that's cool that you're you're continuing to write with her, and that's how amazing is it to have a song be you know not only repurposed with somebody as you know somebody like Miley Cyrus, but to have her be able to release it as well. That's awesome um amazing it's amazing and super cool and I'm super grateful and pumped and happy and i love that song <laughs> <laughs> and you and you uh recently you have another single right now with christina perry as well right that she her oh, okay. single that just came out yeah christina we did um that album started took two and a half years to make because of the because of the pandemic and we started it in 2019 and then she was like, come to my house in October of 2020. And I flew to Jersey and we started the, I guess, record then, like really recording it. And um, Evergone is the single that's out now. It's top 50 on the AC charts, which is really great. And Christina's amazing. And she's from New Jersey. So I obviously have a thing for Jersey people, probably because that's where I'm from. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well she's from she, philly but she grew up uh her she and her husband uh have been in jersey for a while no longer mm-hmm. but they were there for for a long time are you jumping back and forth between projects like when you work on something with her and you, i mean you said you worked on that record and you were there but were you yeah I mean, you must be like is it hard to kind of jump between like mindsets or, or or do you enjoy that um i think it depends on how much time i have but like de- definitely um it's good to switch it up unless of course you're totally like locked in somewhere and doing something with someone for 
for like weeks on end. But like with Christina, we would, we would do like, um, we would do like three weeks and then I'd work on it. And then maybe I'd have a session or something. And then I'd get back together with her. I don't know. You switch it up. You write with, you know, different people. I think keeps it interesting. I love it. And yeah. so you're and uh, do you have anything else coming out, you know, in the near, near future that you're excited about? Um, near, near future or um, in the near future, anything you can talk about that you're like, I'm so excited for this artist uh, and song to come out. I'm really, I'm really excited about the Fletcher stuff. Um, I think it's really, really dope. Um, I lo- Caitlin just dropped a song called maybe in another life, which I really like. Um, I think that it's really a beautiful song and, um, uh, I'm happy about that. Um, I'm pumped that Miley re-released high on the live record. Um, Christina's album is beautiful. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's like, and there's like a couple other things that are like happening, but nothing confirmed. So I don't know, just doing the thing, trying to get mm-hmm. good shit out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Very cool. Yeah. Cause when I talked to Caitlin or when I interviewed her, she had just put out or she was getting ready to put out supernova, I believe at the time or she had just maybe oh she had just God, put it out really- yeah it oh, was like God. in the beginning of 2020 like it was like right or when COVID had happened i think it was one of the early early on uh things that had gone on it was crazy um yeah that, oh yeah that's when it dro- yeah yep i remember that that's correct she dropped a record in the beginning of the pandemic and then she just dropped one yeah you're correct yeah it was crazy because i remember it like it when I talked to her, it was just like, whoa, like what is happening? It was kind of, everyone was like, yeah, so afraid and obviously been and confused and and everything else, but that's awesome that she's been able to, you continue in that you write with her and she's got other stuff coming out and I love her as well. That's awesome. Um, cool. I have one more quick question for you, Jen, before I let you go. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Um, uh, keep going. Don't, don't quit find uh find your thing and stick with it and i don't know be authentic (laughs) i'm the worst with this kind of stuff 